brilliant ideas, powered by Hyundai Motor. The contemporary art world is vibrant and booming as never before. It's a 21st century phenomenon, a global industry in its own right. Brilliant Ideas looks at the artists at the heart of this. They have a unique power to inspire, astonish, provoke, and shock. In this episode, we meet Chinese artist Zhu Bing. So this is my studio. Yeah. So welcome to my studio. And uh, the studio is a pretty nice. Yeah. And we are just uh, working, always uh, working. An intellectual by nature and a poet at heart, Zhu Bing is without a doubt one of the most important Chinese artists of his generation. He's certainly an artist who really has forged a very particular path for himself. He has such a kind of immediately visible signature style. I mean, you can tell when things come from his hand, and you can tell when they come from his mind. For over 30 years, Zhu Bing has been creating works of wonder, blending Chinese tradition with the contemporary. He has this immediate impression that he gives, which is of this extraordinarily meticulous and fanatical perfection. And inventing new ways of seeing that can both delight and provoke. Born in 1955, Zhu was the middle child to parents working at Peking University. His mother was a librarian, while his father worked in the history department. Xiao 所以鼓励了我这个对画画越来越有兴趣。Raised around books and intellectuals, it was a happy childhood for Zhu Bing, but Mao's cultural revolution in 1966 brought all of that to an end. His father was imprisoned and his family torn apart. 这个这家庭当然在那个期间和很多家庭一样就是四分五裂的。during of the Cultural Revolution, I went to the countryside. Yeah, this is my small village. That I'm a, about 18, yeah, that age. I live in there about three years. I do the everything. I can do every farmer things, yeah. I work really hard, yeah. China was changing. But for Zhu Bing, it was the changing Chinese language that would have the most lasting effects. Under Chairman Mao, the language Zhu Bing had always known was modified and simplified and then retooled for propaganda. Something he'd experienced firsthand as a child, forced to lend his skills to the revolution in order to stay in school. He came from a fairly artistic family and he had a natural talent for, for writing. He was put into the propaganda brigade and there his job was to write big character posters. So this was Xu Bing's job, and I think that that sort of contrast between what he had seen and experienced as a child and, you know, the poetry that's in the language, and then how that changes when the, the language is put to something so utilitarian as a, a socialist slogan, um, I think all of these things were part of that sort of intrigue that developed in him. And in 1976, the revolution ended. 
the art schools reopened, and Zhu Bing returned to Beijing to study printmaking at the Central Academy of Fine Arts. But his experiences during the revolution never left him. And so the very first work Zhu Bing did after earning his masters was to do with language. Titled Book from the Sky, it was an enormous installation of books and scrolls that looked like Chinese at first, but are actually nonsense. It's his most iconic work to date. When you enter, you have this really solemn, respectful air and atmosphere, as though you were surrounded by this really ancient knowledge. And then, you know, you go a little bit further, you realize, well, you, you don't see anything at all. For Chinese people, this is a very disconcerting experience. It feels like Chinese is not. Every character seems to suggest something, but not. I want to create a space for the space. When people enter this space, people will be so high and so high. When people look at it, they find that they don't understand anything. I spent two years to create the 和克制了这个四千多个字，因为在平时的中文的阅读物上是四千多个字，就是说，意思说你能够记住超过四千个字，你就是知识分子。It's a very weird experience. It's a really powerful one because you feel like meaning is just within reach, and then it slips out. Now, of course, that's the experiential level, but then there's another level for him, which is when language has been twisted. So that you really can't understand it anymore. A sense of disorientation in truth and ability to access truth. And he really felt this, you know, in the Cultural Revolution. Tianshu这个作品其实在给人类提示一种警觉，这个警觉就是说，意识到我们与文化之间到底是什么样的一种关系，让你重新反省。He's fascinated really with meaning and how we create it in our words, but also in our lives. He's so kind of so deeply introverted and so reflective. I mean, this is the son of a historian and a librarian who grew up also watching that, you know, the position of the intellectual being far from stable and then still kind of coming back to it after all of that. I think it's really, yeah, there's a very deep humanism to it all. After the break, we recount Zhu Bing's time in New York, and we enter the mysterious world of Chinese calligraphy. Ideas. Ideas. Chinese artist Zhu Bing grew up during the Cultural Revolution. When China finally opened its doors to the world, Zhu Bing, already a well-regarded artist at that point, seized the opportunity to move to New York in 1990. It was his home for 18 years, and in that time, he produced works that were more experimental than before, but always with words and language at their core. I was very interested in the the 回想起了这些作品呢，它对我呢来说就像习作一样的，让我尝试和了解了一种这个比较直接的一种表达的方法。Xu Bing moving to New York was, you know, of course affected him greatly. In the end, it probably affected him by being more Chinese. So one thing he did was he created square English calligraphy, and I think that's an interesting take on, you know, intercultural dynamics. Zhu Bing returned to China in 2008 when he was offered to become the vice president of his alma mater, the Central Academy of Fine Arts. Here in his personal studio in Beijing, he continues to practice his square word calligraphy from New York, English words made to look like Chinese characters. I started wrote that kind of calligraphy by 1993 because, uh, you know, my English is not good, yeah. but I'm li living in New York. So, kind of like I'm living in between the two cultures. If uh, I'm uh, 
still live in Beijing. No reason I created that kind of calligraphy. Yeah. Do you understand? You can read it. It's easy to read. Yeah. You, right? May, M, A, Y. Say, I am, right? A dreamer, right? But I'm not the only one, right? In Chinese calligraphy, uh, we like changing. That's the same word, but it's uh, wrote by a different way. You know, the I am, this I am. It's a very complex work that can deal with how we see something, how different audiences understanding something can be completely different. There's always that with Shubing, right? There are all these things that he likes to play with the audience expectations of what it should be versus what it could be. And the incredible thing is he has a whole system to it. I really like this本质的目的还真不是为了把字写得好看其实是带有文化性in his second studio in Beijing, okay. Zhu Bing has his attention focused on another language, the language of signs. In 2003, he started Book from the Ground, a story told entirely with icons of a day in the life of an ordinary man, in playful detail. The Book from the Earth, which is a funny project because it was really developed before emoji were all around us, you know, before we were constantly attached to our phones. And he was actually looking at that kind of international language and then trying to tell a very basic story kind of from these things. All this icon not invented by us. We don't invent anyone. We just collect it. So we just compare the how different, which part is common, for example, newspaper, you know, the different. But which one's better? I think this one's better, maybe, right? Yeah. He's always had a very keen eye for what is happening in culture in any given moment. And we can see that when you look at how he began with the first book from the sky, and then the more recent project, the book from the ground, which deals with the very contemporary symbols that are now an international language that we all understand everywhere. Book from the Ground was released all over the world in 2012 and to much acclaim. Now, Zhu Bing is working on a new pop-up version of the original book. So, yeah, right now we are working uh, on a new project. Yeah, the project is uh, developing this uh, book yeah, to, uh, to a three-dimension three book. Yeah, and we open, yeah, just starting the stories. Uh, he says he went to the bathroom, but uh, he couldn't make it, you know. And uh, he's uh, thinking, sit down there thinking, oh, what problem, my stomach? You know, there's some, this, uh, they, they can get some, this pop, yeah, down. yeah, very funny. Then they have some this, uh, bad smells, you know. 我做了一本书,这本书呢是世界上任何人都可以读懂的书。他不需要 
，它是超越于地域文化，而且它是超越于这个呃教育等级的。差不多那个书有二十多年了吧，快三十年了。呃，那时候呢，我做了一本书，是谁都读不懂的《Book from Sky》，哎，然后呢，现在又做了一本书，是谁都可以读懂的，啊、嗯。但是这两本书其实它有共同之处，它的共同点就在于它对谁都是平等的。Coming up, Zhu Bing shows us his latest projects that are once again never what they seem. Ideas. Ideas. For over 30 years, Zhu Bing has enchanted the world with his thoughtful twists on tradition, language, and culture. In his Beijing studio, he's working on another one of his pieces that looks like one thing at first, but as always with Zhu Bing, it's actually something completely different. Right now, we're working on this project they call Background Story. First, we see this is a really beautiful Chinese landscape, yeah, or Chinese ink painting. But uh, we let the audience walk around the piece. They like the installation, yeah. So the audience first see there's a beautiful Chinese uh, landscape, ink painting. But when they come back, they finally they find, oh, this is actually made by the garbage. If you touch the materials tightly to the, to the glass, in the front, they will show the sharp image. But uh, if uh, you give them distance, the image will be blurry, look like uh, ink on the rice paper. This kind of waste material, I think, is the most important material, or the most important material that is not used in our eyes. But the change of these materials and the use of them, I think, is the most important part 改变就越深刻，嗯，当然观众到后面以后呢，最后会把你的习惯的思维，或者说你已经有的这个思维范畴给打开。实际上就像一个魔术师，你做了魔术以后，最后把这个谜底呢告诉观众啊，呃，他有点这样的一个手法。In 2015, two of his largest waste sculptures were exhibited at the Arsenal for the Venice Biennale. Made to look like a pair of phoenixes, the sculptures were made entirely out of junk construction materials. Zhu Bing spent two years collecting materials from all over Beijing, including junkyards like this one. Ruom. 我没有回到中国，就不会有 Phoenix 这样的作品。就是凤凰这个作品呢，其实它，呃，和这个中国的现场，和中国的现实，其实它是从它的材料上和它所谈到的问题上，其实都是非常紧密的。That piece is so much about that particular moment in Beijing、uh, when construction was everywhere. As the city was gearing up for the Olympics, and you know, it almost felt like a war zone, just the amount of debris. But it was this kind of positive debris that was building something, um, and of course, that also cost lives. You know, people died in these construction sites, and you know, in a way, it's almost like a new kind of socialist realism or sort of art, you know, for the workers and peasants and soldiers, and that he's he's really expressing a kind of concern for the people who are making these things. This is the safety mask. Actually, it has the same effect as the mask. It is to show a personal identity or to tell you that I am here. This is actually what we have actually used a lot of the construction head on our mask mask. The mask materials actually 就是这些材料呢，其实都是被这个劳动者是所触碰过的吧，所以它每一块呢，其实都有它背后的故事。
he tried to engage in the uh, contemporary politics, to certain kind of politics, in a very subtle way. When the people pay their attention to those shining buildings, he pay his attention to the garbage, to the junks, and uh, to the labors. But of course, it's, uh, he also uh, interested in the change of the meaning or the implication of single arts. His phoenixes have traveled all over the world, from Beijing to Shanghai to New York, and each time the birds take on entirely new meanings. The church in New York, very beautiful lights. It's like a, suddenly the phoenix became mythical but not in the Chinese context. Asana was arm, is for military. So these two phoenix were more, looks more fracious. It's almost like a fleet, two fleets once you go out. People will understand it from their perspective. He obviously studied the context very much. He, he closely pay, uh, pay his attention to see the difference. I don't want the audience to see my work as a very clear conclusion. I just understood it immediately. Oh, I'm talking about this thing. I hope there are all kinds of possibilities. In fact, all these techniques are to bring the audience to a new place. It's to bring the audience to a new place. 是他们过去的视觉和思维和这个感受力从来没有到达过的一个地方。I think Xu Bing is really one of the most important Chinese artists in the last 20-30 years. Some of his works really take a certain time to look at and experience. But once you do, people can get a lot more out of it. It seems like his art is a type of art that, you know, across different times and countries. People can still gain some sort of meaning from it, and I think, you know, for art to be able to do that, that's, uh, well, you know, that's what art should do. He has such a kind of immediately visible signature style. I mean, you can tell when things come from his hand, and you can tell when they come from his mind. There's something about, you know, the color of that paper and the sort of feel of those strokes and that ink that really stands in for. The idea that art can be a place to explore ideas and make propositions and think through questions. He really is the artist as humanist, and there's there's something about that consideration and that level of depth and nuance that's really uplifting. This world and reality are constantly changing. 而你呢，一定是有你的感受和你想表述的东西。那我刚才说了，你就是说你，你必须要找到一个新的方法来说你要说的这个过去没有人说过的话。所以呢，你一定要不断的去去寻找这种新的说话的方法。Brilliant ideas, powered by Hyundai Motor.